Hello there, fellow havers of terrible teammates. Today, we're going to have a look at two really great 1vx situations that maybe or may not be resulting in a victory. Let's have a look, because how do you win a 1vx? And first of all, what are the stats of the 50tp that we're playing with right here? You can pause the video and have a look at them yourself. But what is important here, decent armor, decent mobility, 440 alpha damage. It just sort of works, and it also is... Somewhat easy to play, 4A tier 9. Now, the important thing here is, stay alive. This is one thing that I recommend for anybody, how to play a battle. You're aggressive in the early stage of a battle, because everything is disorganized and random, everybody's trying to hustle into a position and try to get to some spot and doesn't know what to do and where to go. You can be aggressive in the early parts of the battle, and in the mid parts of the battle, it is important. Maybe sit back a little bit to watch what is unfolding? Is this team winning? Is this team completely falling apart? What type of tank are you playing? For example, if you were in a mouse, you obviously would have to go forward. You have to protect your team from losing hit points. Or if you're a leopard, you go all around the side. You find out where the enemy team is. You find the place where they are the weakest, and then you attack there. And then in the end of the battle, ideally, you'll have retained your hit points. You will have done a decent amount of damage. And then, if it is necessary you have the ability to 1vx which is very nice now awareness is the key and that is very lovely right here moving back there's three heavy tanks coming down you can shoot them very easily and uh, that is free damage again looking behind though because now those three heavies can't be a threat they're still not there yet that t 2 however is gonna be a big threat so gamer is gonna shut him down you know it is important very here to sort of protect the team because those three guys down there they're obviously essentially behind the team and the team is busy trying to kill that enemy tank destroyer so using these three guys here and stopping them from advancing can be very useful and also helps the rest of the team like ideally you want to help the team as much as possible without hurting yourself that is the important thing to consider you don't want to hurt yourself for the benefit of the team unless you're a vehicle that plays of that style like a vk100 or a mouse that essentially just exists to sponge hit points for the rest of the team if you're in a regular vehicle you want to help your team without hurting yourself and still gamer is full hp right here and there's three vehicles left against four on the enemy team and now the Borsic got exploded. What is important here, again, is important in every situation like this. Take out the guns first that you lose the minimum amount of hit points in the maximum amount of time, right? Because the less tanks there are on the enemy team, the less DPM they have to shoot at you. And ideally, also they're easy to take out. Now the IS-3 here is the prime target uh, to take out. Also the other one shot, the T-30, on the back is also very easy to take out and should be taken out because that guy can do a lot of damage without it being very funny now the su-130 in this case obviously it doesn't make any sense right here in this situation to try to shoot the is-3 when the su obviously presents himself as an easy target right you shouldn't go out of your way to do that you always want to fire at the easiest target first and that is what is the most dangerous second now the su-5 here He's moving up. He, the Eastern 5 essentially knows that he's the only one that still has hit points that can still win this battle. So Gamer here also knows that if he takes out the other three, um, then he can essentially 1v1 the Eastern 5. Now, also, what you ideally want to do is just isolate yourself. The Eastern 5 is doing a really, really good job here at helping Gamer win this match because the SU-130 is blocked off from firing and the T-30 is blocked off from firing at the 50 TP. You always want to fight a 1v1 and not just in a 1vx situation like this one you always want to fight a 1v1 at worst ideally you want to fight somebody that's not fighting back but at worst you want to fight a 1v1 because that way you have the highest chances of winning it now t30 it rightfully so he does push forward he tries to close that distance which is why getting distance is very useful and very important in a situation like this and the enemy's goal is to close that distance, to get up close, to fight him at the same time. Because obviously, you only have one tank, you only have one gun that you can point in one direction. And the SU-130, he's just slow. And that's another thing. If you're slow, you lose. You want to fight 1v1s. want to get the right distance so that 
When the enemy has to come towards you, you can use that distance or extra time as a weapon. And on top of that, if the enemy is really slow at reacting, if they try to aim for half an hour, then, well, they're most likely going to lose and get wrecked. Because if you fire first, just like in real life, in a real life engagement, those that fire first probably win most of the time. So, unless you're a very inaccurate derp gun, then please aim your shot. Like, make sure that the shot's gonna hit. But fire it as fast as possible. And now, the T-30 ideally does have the advantage here. He's at the top, but he completely biffs it by YOLOing forward and giving up his soft underbelly to Gamer. Very well played by Gamer right here. They probably couldn't have done it any better. And the enemy team couldn't have thrown it any Worse, that is actually impressive. Because you also need luck. And now, with a, with a bad shot, you need that because the vehicle has, and you ideally should know how to drive. That crashing into the rock is immediately going to tell you that that's my replay. Um, right, because nobody else is dumb enough to drive into a rock like that and then win a 1v4. But... Anyway, so the Batcha, 3-shot autoloader, this is a really great vehicle. And there are essentially two types of Batcha player. Either they're brain dead or they're tryhards. The problem is, I'm brain dead. So let's see how I'm gonna solve this battle right here. Now, we have three mediums. We have two, and for the sake of it, I'm gonna count mediums and lights at the same category because the matchmaker counts mediums and lights in the same category, so I will too. So, we have an advantage in that department, which is very lovely. The medium fight tends to last less time than the heavy fight. So if you can beat the enemy mediums, the enemy heavies, they're still fighting, they're still ongoing. You have less DPM most of the time, you have less mobility, you have more armor, which means the heavy fight lasts longer. So winning the medium fight quickly can be of very good use to you, because then your medium's alive, your heavies are alive, ideally unless they completely through. And then you can completely annihilate the enemy team because they don't have mediums anymore and their heavies are going to get wrecked right up the rear. Now, the reason why I move back here is quite simple because I can see that the IS-7 is going to come around there and the 62A sort of holding that position. Uh, that's why the reason I'm not really reloading here either because I just wanted to um, try to take that T-62A out. And now I'm going to reload. I'm going to wait uh, for that to happen. Now, the problem is the O and the Fosh, they did get wrecked, which is... Very bad. That's not cool. Let's just put it that way. And there's a 183 as well in the back that now took out the 121. And now it is a 3 versus 6. So what do we do here? Well, first of all, the most important thing in a situation like this is preserve hit points and distance. The further away the enemies are, the less they can hurt me. The further away I am from each enemy, the more, I, especially in a fast vehicle like this, the more important that is, because I can close the distance quickly to any of the enemy heavy tanks. But they have a harder time closing the distance to me. So I have an advantage and I can choose which one I want to fight first. Right? I don't want to just sit in front of them and just have them own me. Right? That's the worst thing you can do essentially in that position. And now, I know the Batchet's behind me. I already put that Batchet into memory. I can clip him. He's there. But I have to be aware of him. Now, the FE-4202, shout out to that guy, because without him, this would have never actually worked. So, uh, sometimes you need some competent teammates, and he did a really good job there, especially against the 4005 as well. And uh, there's the Badger. Now, there's three tanks. Two of them are one-shot. Again, for a 1VX like this, you want to have a couple of one-shots. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult, and maybe a little bit of luck to high roll as well. Now, I immediately reload here, and... I'm kind of going to make a little, little bit of a mistake here, and you'll you'll hear why in a minute. But what I wanted to do here is reload, attack the badger. Did you hear that? Yup. You need a little bit of luck for a situation like this as well. You need a little bit of luck. Or a badger that um, forgot to take his meds. I don't really know what happened to him. I mean, he sort of drove around and maybe had connection issues. and That's a bit anticlimactic there now, is it? Now... Here's the problem. It's a 1v1 now. And I, I did turn around a bit too quickly there. But at that point, I was like, well, I know where the 183 is, so I don't really care whether he knows where I am. Because I'm going to go and spot it anyway. And by the time it takes for me to get to him, he's not going to know where I am anyway. But ideally, you drive one direction, 
for 10 seconds. And after those 10 seconds, you turn around and go into a different direction because then the enemy is likely to not know where you're actually going. Which is very useful. Now, I know where the 183 is. I mean, obviously, he's in the camping spot there. He's also likely to be full HP. There you go. And uh, I have a bad shot. I have an advantage. Like, this is why I like medium tanks a lot more than I like heavy tanks or tank straws. Because in a situation like this, you have a pretty big advantage. Because if you can control the map, you control the engagement, you're going to win it. Unless you're a one shot and they're full HP. But that's a different story. But if you can control the engagement like this, you're going to have a very good time. Now, I see the 183, he's very far away, and that's an advantage to me. Because I can just play around the rock, and he's sitting out at the open. He has to drive through the open space to get to me. Which is a pretty big disadvantage to him. So, get that distance, get that separation. And now, I'm already set up, I'm driving in the perfect direction to reverse out. On the other side, peak one side, reverse, peak the other side. He's dead. Not bad. Maybe that helped with playing 1vx situations. As always, take out the easiest tank first. Get your distance. Play 1v1s. And at the end, be a little bit lucky. And then you will collect a lot of Kolobanov's medals. And ideally, you also have cool teammates like that FE4202 that made it all possible.